In today's session, we are going to discuss GIPS. Global Investment Performance Standards majorly related to performance presentation. Now the question arises, why we need a particular standard for performance presentation and measurement? So first of all, we'll discuss what is the need for GIPS. Generally what happens whenever the firms are presenting their performance, they mostly use their own methodologies for reporting performance and all these performance presentations are not comparable across firms because different firms uses different standards and there is no common standard. In absence of common standard, it becomes very difficult for investors to compare the performance of firms. So different standard is one reason why GIPS came into, why GIPS came into existence. Second reason was generally the firms have a tendency to choose a methodology that makes their performance looks good. So basically we are calling it here as representative accounts. So they'll use such accounts in which the fund manager has performed well and they'll use it to show their performance so that the performance looks good. Third reason is survivorship bias. What happens? Generally they exclude terminated accounts and why those accounts were terminated because the, account, the fund was not doing well and because of which what happens the performance looks good. So generally they have a ten tendency that all the worst performing accounts will be termin uh, will be excluded from, uh, from performance presentation. So whatever remains good is only shown to the investors which creates some kind of a survivorship bias in performance presentation. Then generally what happens different firms choose different time periods for performance presentations. So they have a tendency that they select time periods that put firms performance in the best possible light. So for example if a fund has done well from 2015 uh, to 2020 and the fund didn't perform well from 2010 to 2015. So selectively they'll choose this period of 2015 to 20 in which the fund has performed well and accordingly they'll show it to the investors. So what was the need for GIPS? It was just to ensure that performance is presented in such a manner that it is easy and convenient for investors to analyze and it is comparable. So the coming back to the main point, what exactly is GIPS? So GIPS is nothing but it's a standard methodology, right? Which makes a standard methodology for what? For performance presentation, which makes comparison of performance across firms meaningful. At the same time, it provides specific information, which is important for both clients and prospective clients. Most important thing is that it avoids misrepresentation of performance. So these were the reasons why GIPS came into picture. Now as far as applicability is concerned, GIPS only apply to firms that actually manage assets. And it is not mandatory. Compliance with GIPS is not mandatory, rather it is voluntary. Investment management firms, they have a choice if they want to comply with GIPS, then they can comply with GIPS. But compliance with GIPS cannot be partial. It has to be full compliance. No partial compliance is allowed. Compliance with GIPS is not mandatory. It is the firm's choice whether they want to comply with GIPS standards or not. But if they choose to comply with GIPS standards, then it has to be full compliance. There can be no partial compliance. One more important point here is that there are certain firms which are not actually managing the assets. For example, we talk about software developers who are assisting asset, asset management business. Now all those software de developers who are not actually managing the assets, is it mandatory for them to comply with GIPS? First of all, GIPS is not mandatory, right? Even if those software developers, they may endorse GIPS, but 
they cannot claim compliance with gifts compliance with gifts can be claimed only by the firms that are managing assets so how gifts benefits so it is obviously beneficial for investment management firms because if they came compli claim compliance with gifts then it gives a lot of credibility to their performance presentation and obviously it is meaningful for current and future clients of investment management firms so that they can analyze the performance they can compare the performance of one firm with another firm before moving ahead with the section of gifts it is very important for us to understand what is a composite what is a discretionary portfolio so all these terminologies are important for us to understand before we move to the eight section of gifts the first thing which is very important for us to understand is what is a composite what a composite is nothing but an aggregation of individual discretionary portfolios managed with same investment mandate objective or strategy so let's say if there is a fund which is majorly investing in let's say large cap stocks so all those portfolios which are actually invested in large cap stocks they can be clubbed together as a part of composite then what is the meaning of individual discretionary portfolios discretionary here means what the fund manager has the full right to choose what securities to include in the portfolio there is no interference from client as far as selection of securities is concerned all those portfolios will be called discretionary non discretionary means what the client is giving a direction for inclusion of a particular security so if there is a client interference in selection of securities in construction of portfolio that portfolio will not be called a discretionary portfolio remember in composite we can only include discretionary portfolios non discretionary portfolios are never included as a part of composite the reason is very very simple if the fund manager is not selecting securities or not constructing portfolio then how can you judge the performance of that portfolio manager if it is being directed by the clients then we are not judging the performance of fund manager but rather we are judging the performance of clients one important thing is in a particular composite we have to include only those portfolios which are having similar mandate objective or strategy the example could be your the, uh, the way i gave you the example of large large cap stocks or maybe some funds are saying that they are investing only in investment grade bonds or domestic bonds right so they have they need to have similar mandate objective or strategy whenever we talk about composite in composite we must include all fee paying discretionary portfolios be it current or past now it is important for us to understand here what is a fee paying portfolio so fee paying means generally in the uh, portfolio the entire fee is borne by the client non fee paying discretionary portfolios are never included as a part of composite so the most important point here is that in composite we can only include fee paying discretionary portfolios so fee paying discretionary portfolios will be included as a part of composite then all discretionary portfolios must be included in only one and one composite which means what a particular discretionary portfolio cannot be a part of two or three composites they have to be included in one and only one composite right so the most important thing here is as far as inclusion in composite is concerned it has to be a fee paying discretionary portfolios right and the moment i am talking about discretionary portfolio it means what this has been managed by a fund manager in accordance with a particular strategy okay coming back to what is the objective of gips so gips is voluntary as i have already stated so basically this was made to promote global self regulation so all the fund managers all the asset management firms all the investment management firms if they are adopting gips which means what they are self regulating themselves and obviously if there is a common standard for performance presentation it will lead to fair competition among firms right then everybody is accepting 
that if we are following GIFs, we are following their calculation and presentation standards, which means what? Now this has become a globally accepted standard. And obviously, whatever presentation, performance presentation is happening, all the required disclosure has to be there. Then it ensures that there's a consistent, accurate investment performance data in areas of your reporting, records, making, marketing, and presentation. So basically, GIPS ensures that there is a common standard for performance presentation. Comparab comparability becomes very easy, and there is a consistency and accuracy in perform in presenting the performance. So all these are the reasons why. Gibbs came into existence. Now the point is, how do we define form? So obviously we have already talked about that form must comply. Now if the form chooses to comply with Gibbs, so what is the definition of form here? What it says, Gibbs cannot be applied on a different subsidiaries differently. Gibbs has to be applied on a form-wide basis right and this firm has to be a distinct business unit, uh, unit for example if icaca bank and icaca prudential mutual funds are two business and uh, distinct business entities and if icaca prudential claims comply with gifts that does not mean that icaca also has full compliance with gifts so it has to be defined as a distinct business unit we have to include the broadest definition of the firm Whatever geographical presence the firm has and whatever all brands, if they are marketing uh, marketed under the same brand name, we have to include everything as a part of definition of the firm. Now, moving on to the most important part of GIPS, there are made, uh, eight major section of GIPS. And what are those? So the first is your fundamentals of compliance. What fundamental of compliance means? that you have to ensure that there are certain things which has to be a part of your performance presentation. And what are those? So the first one is your fundamentals of compliance. And in this, what you need to do, you have to define the form. What exactly is the definition of the form? So you need to define the form. I have already told you, you need to include the broadest definition of the form. You need to provide GIFS compliant report to all your clients and prospective clients first thing is that you have to give a broadest definition of the form the second thing is you have to give gifts compliant report to all your clients and prospects and then obviously you have to up comply with all the rules regulation and laws and then you need to provide information that should not be misleading so these are the major things which are covered under fundamentals of compliance. The second section is input data and calculation methodology. As far as the input data is concerned, so obviously whenever you are uh, presenting your performance, there is some input data which will be used. Now what it says, while using input data, you have to maintain consistency so that you can establish full, fair and comparable investment performance presentations uniformity in using input data and calculation methodology will ensure that clients and prospects are easily able to compare the performance of one fund with another fund. third one is your composite and pooled fund maintenance what exactly it means 